technology isn't static, it isn't constant. It constantly evolves and changes and develops. You need to test these ideas. You need to actually understand and be open to new ways of doing things and see if it actually makes it better. And our net is able to go, oh yes, we can test it. Yes, we can go that little bit because it's not quite constrained with the same heavily conservative view of technology that you find in the sort of more disciplined commercial world. We thought when we were building this, we were in transition from mainframe computers to the ubiquitous desktop PC and all those laptops. We're now in this next transition that everything is in your pocket. And it's not just in your pocket, it's on your wrist, it's sort of in wearables, it's in your car. And so the internet's actually disappearing from view. And what you're seeing instead is that devices are becoming smarter, more anticipatory. Do you really want to go out today without your umbrella? And it's that kind of embedding that's really changing the world. So now we conceive the internet right now as mobile devices and mobile networks. But my suspicion is that in 10 years time, even that will fade from view, that it's no longer the one size fits all single computing device. It's lots of little things doing little jobs amazingly. I, I think the biggest shock, but it wasn't really a shock if you've been thinking about it, was that the internet's subject to exactly the same level of um, surveillance as the old phone system. Somehow we thought we were immune. Somehow we thought that if we used our computers, you know, we couldn't be spied on anymore. And the big shock was we are more vulnerable than ever and that privacy is now a completely outdated concept. That's okay, except when it turns against us. Because the other thing we recognize in this consistently sort of automated world, rife with computers and computing, is they're not that good. And so there's this constant threat of insecurity, of, of being subverted, of having the machines turn against us and create attacks. So now the big things on the internet, savage online attacks. Ransomware, where your computer is captured and encrypted and you have to pay bitcoins to get it back. This constant threat model, where we somehow can't seem to get around it. Part of the reason is, I suppose, that while some bits of technology have gone ahead by leaps and bounds, underneath it all, we're still humans programming and our programs are not that good. There are edges and points. We make massively complex systems, but some of them are still vulnerable and those vulnerabilities that turn around and bite us. And we don't really have solid answers for that. So when you say, where's it heading? Well, next year's kind of easy, more of the same. Probably a bit smaller, probably a bit cheaper. We're probably going to see driverless cars, probably. We're probably going to see a lot of those sort of automated city systems. But that's a medium term or even a short term vision. When you go out some number of decades, jobs, entire professions will go. Exactly what those jobs are, some of them are pretty obvious. If you're a telemarketer, you've got a problem. But other things, like even the teaching profession, to what extent are we able to automate, mechanize, and replace that with systems that are cheaper? You know, in this kind of process of taking what humans do and replacing it with a combination of artificial intelligence and mechanistic you know, systems, robotics, will continue inexorably. And in its wake, we're going to find huge social change. The real challenge is not in guessing what that change will be, but in socially coping with it, in not making it a cause of massive disruption and disaffection, actually engaging us all in this world, which will be radically different.